With the exception of Deadpool, the only X-Men character prior to him to receive the solo treatment in movies was Wolverine. So after the first three X-Men films, we were given X-Men Origins Wolverine. And that's what my retrospective review here today is about. That their film. So let's find out how good this one holds up. Hello everyone. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome to my review series of the X-Men movies, retrospectively. Um, it's been some time since I've sat down and watched these films and I've never actually watched them in close proximity to one another. So, yeah, what am I getting out of it? Well, in April 29th of 2009, we were given X-Men Origins um, after Brett Ratner's X-Men The Last Stand. The idea came about to make some X-Men solo movies, some origin movies. Touted was the Wolverine one that we got, and also on the cards was Magneto. Unfortunately, that film never came to be. Um, but as I said, on April 29th of 2009, X-Men Origins Wolverine was released with a 12A rating and a runtime of 1 hour and 47 minutes. It had a budget of $150 million and went on to take worldwide $373 million. The film was directed by Gavin Hood and came at us, written by David Benioff and um, Skip Wood. Now, this film here, it starts off about 200 years ago, and Marvel had recently published, at the time, a comic book called Origins, which was a, a, a book that gave us the origins of the character of Wolverine, um, Logan. And the start of this film is very much based upon that, set during that time. You have him and his brother, um, Victor, Victor Creed, Sabretooth, and these two uh, suffer some childhood trauma and they kind of grow up together as brothers and we get this we treat this fantastic opening montage of of different wars and these two brothers fighting their way through these wars but as things progress we see a darker side kind of appear in the character of Victor um, Victor Creed Sabretooth in this movie is played by Liv Schreiber um, and then the film kind of catches up to more of a modern time feel and you've got Stryker, a younger Stryker and he's got all these mutant individuals working for him like a sort of assassin task force um, including Victor Creed, including Wade Wilson, Deadpool, before he becomes Deadpool, played by Ryan Reynolds, and a wealth of other mutants, including the actor Will I Am, um, and many others. Um, Logan leaves this life, he decides to leave it behind, and he goes and becomes a tree feller. Um, up in Canada where he's got a love interest and he just goes out into the woods, does his day job and that's it until we come to realise or find out that um, members of this task force that Stryker had put together are being killed they're being um, systematically murdered one by one it turns out that it's actually Victor Creed doing this and William Stryker turns up and tries to get the help of Logan Wolverine and in doing so his his love interest gets killed and this drives Wolverine to go with Stryker to go and have a, a um, medical procedure done where the adamantium is grafted onto his body because prior to this he didn't have the metal skeleton all he had was a normal bone structure with bone claws but the ability to heal so he goes through this procedure and he he gets all this stuff but he comes to realize that he overhears them saying about wiping his mind um striker has a plan he's a bad guy in all of this he's actually 
um, involved with Victor Creed still and he's getting all these mutants killed off that worked with him. Their powers are being taken because he's making Weapon 11, not Weapon X. Weapon X is the first, is the Wolverine weapon. But Weapon 11 is another mutant that, that has the ability of all of these other mutants thrown into the fray. So you've got Wolverine, before he becomes Wolverine, Logan on a revenge spree, um, conflict with his brother, these other mutants being killed off one by one, and it all culminates in this big action scene at this kind of power plant with a big, you know, a power plant chimney stack thing, um, and a fight with... Deadpool, or a, a version of Deadpool that is nothing like Deadpool in the comics. And that's the film that we are given here. So is this film any good? Because this film does get a... a uh, it gets a hard time, doesn't it? I mean, the film has a 38% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes and a 58% score from audiences, so not particularly high. Now... I wasn't originally going to watch this film yet. I was going to just go through the X saga of movies. But I thought, you know what? No, let's do it as they were released in that order. So that brings us to um, this film here. And that's, that's why I watched it. It wasn't an easy watch. Um, the problem with this film, that is, there's multitudes of problems with this film. Um, it feels like a kind of cheaper version of the earlier X-Men films in that... All we've got to do is is, is cast Hugh Jackman. Um, we ain't got to pay for anyone else who has garnered a, a career out of the X-Men franchise and are probably asking for more money. We can do away with all of them, have new characters brought into the fray, and there we have it. So as, as with the new characters, the only ones that really stand out are... Um, most definitely Liv Schreiber as Sabretooth, as, as Wolverine's brother. However, and this is another problem with this film, is the continuity. The continuity doesn't stand up because if you remember in the first X-Men film, we are introduced to Sabretooth. He's in many a scene um, and neither of them have any any words that the other is their brother. Now, this is actually a, a bone of contention, but it was covered in the X-Men prequel comic books, right? And and the backstory to that is, well, this is the same Sabretooth, only he loses his memory as well, as well as Wolverine at the end of this film, and that is why they no longer know each other in the first X-Men film. That's lazy. That's horrendous writing right there. They both lose their memories. Yeah, all right. Okay, fair enough. Um, the other standout character is is Taylor Kitsch, who stars in this film in a kind of cameo, extended cameo role as Gambit. A fan favourite character that, other than here, wasn't seen in any X-Men films, unfortunately. So here we have a film that, that it feels somewhat cheaper in a sense. Some of the special effects... Uh, and they're okay. The others are, uh, you know, but it's intermingled with effects that are pretty damn dreadful. Obviously, the film makes a cardinal sin of taking the character of Wolverine here, played by Ryan Reynolds, to effect when he's Wade Wilson. But ultimately, they turn him into a Wolverine. Uh, sorry, a Deadpool. I'm saying Wolverine. They turn him into a Deadpool that is nothing like the Deadpool of the comics or the Deadpool that we now know of the films. Um, Deadpool's always been the merc with the mouth so they show so his mouth up and not only that he's got all these powers that have been given to him by these other mutants that have been killed off um, so he's got uh, even ones that ain't been killed off like he's got the blasts of, of Cyclops because there is a young Cyclops in this film and all this sort of stuff going on um, it's not a good film at all you know this 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 film was quite a difficult watch to get through um, and, and it, it, it left me thinking, is Wolverine actually a character strong enough to carry his own film franchise alone? I know we got three films out of him and, you know, off the top of my head, you've got this one, which ain't very good. You've got the next one, which is OK. And you've got Logan, which is very good. But, you know, I don't think there's too much that can actually be done with this character. Now, as for an origin story, I don't feel like I'm watching an origin story. I feel like I'm just watching a cheaper X-Men film. Um, a film that's been made on the cheap just to, to cash in. 
because origin wise it doesn't really give you anything i mean the idea that here's a bullet here's an adamantium bullet and they even say it before it happens if we shoot him in the head with this bullet it won't kill him but it will erase his memory how do they know that how do they know that that is gonna happen I mean, again, lazy writing right there. So for me, this is an X-Men film that, that makes a lot, a lot of mistakes. And it isn't particularly good. I mean, I can't knock Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman comes along and he does what he does best as this character. And he's great to see in every scene. And he shines. He certainly does. And there's some strong elements in the cast. Like I said, Liv Schreiber is good. Um, the fellow who plays Stryker, he's okay. And we do get a little nod to his son. If you remember in X2, he had his son in that. Two different coloured eyes. We see him in some sort of a chamber and we see the two different colour dice. There's nice little nods back to those sort of things. But ultimately this is a very difficult watch as an X-Men film goes. And I believe that this is I mean I know that the last film people would cite that as where the problem started but I think that this here this here is where the true problem started in the X-Men franchise um, the fact that they didn't care about continuity and all that stuff certainly does show in this film. And that's what I'm saying. To say in the comics, well, it was, you know, um, Sabretooth lost his memory as well. How many people who go and see these films at the cinema actually read the comics? They don't. So they're not given that information. And, and that just feels like a sort of afterthought to write that in there just to try and give it a little bit of connectivity, a little bit of continuity that honestly doesn't work. Now, Liv Schreiber is, a, is an actor who is a great actor and I'd love to see him return in the role of Sabretooth at some point down the line. I think he would be great returning in it. Now, kudos to him. He, he actually originally had to wear a muscle suit. They wanted him to wear a muscle suit for this character, much like what Vinnie Jones did in X and free um, but he felt a bit embarrassed by wearing it and he said to him look give me a chance to bulk up um, so that I'm more comparable in size to Hugh Jackman and he went away and he worked for, for three months heavily to get into shape for this film and then worked trained alongside Hugh Jackman to get the size that he did even taking tips from him on eating and all that sort of a thing so yeah not a very good film at all um very forgettable, very lazy. I did struggle getting through this one. There we go. So let me know your thoughts on this one. X-Men Origins Wolverine. What did you think of this X franchise movie? Let me know down below in the comments. And um, I'll be back, well, in two weeks time for the next movie. What was the next one that came out? Was it the Wolverine before we got the new X franchise I think it possibly was so I'll probably squeeze that one in next if that is the case um, if not it'd be first class but I've still got a look but I have a feeling it's the Wolverine anyway comments down below hit the subscribe button come join the channel and all that stuff see you on the next one take care all and goodbye